Hi, I'm Mike Turner, your friendly filmmaker, and I'm gonna try to rush through this video because my little boy is sleeping and I have a feeling he's gonna wake up while I'm doing this. So let's try to get through this. Now, the Panasonic G95, uh, it looks pretty interesting. It's um, got some improvements over the older G85, but I'm wondering, is it really worth the improvements if you wanna look to upgrade from a G85 or maybe even a G7 or whatever you may have, is it worth it? So let's talk about it. So it does have a bigger, uh, or I should say it has more megapixels now. It has 20 megapixels on that micro four third sensor. So you're gonna get better images. It's supposed to be um, close in image quality to the G9. Uh, so there is that. So I think for photographers, maybe it might be a little bit better. And right now I'm just gonna mention a few of the features that I find useful, you know, as a videographer who shoots a lot of live events. I'm just gonna go through some of those. Uh, if you want like a really in-depth review of this, maybe check out Gordon Lang's video. Um, I'll put some links to that because it was really good and it gives you all the different insights on this camera. You could check him out if you really want all the nuts and bolts. But obviously I'm a videographer, filmmaker, so we're gonna kind of stick to that type of stuff and discuss it. Now, one of the interesting things that it is coming with that I kind of like is it's adding some more buttons and it also has like three scroll wheels or dials on it as opposed to two. Now, honestly, with my G85, I find that the usability of this is actually great. Just with the two dials, I'm fine. Um, doesn't really bother me, but to have an extra one on the back can't hurt. You know, it's only gonna make you even faster when you're using this camera. And like I said, I think Panasonic did a good job when they made this. Feels good in your hands and everything. It's got a nice grip to it. It feels solid. It's weather resistant, you know, um, splash proof and all that, dust resistant. And the newer one is the same. So that's pretty good. Now, a, a, a nice addition that they did add to it now is that it has a headphone jack, not just a microphone jack, the 3.5 millimeter. It also has a headphone jack in it. So now you can monitor your audio as you're recording, which is just excellent for a camera, a, a mid-level camera like this, to have a headphone jack is just crazy. Um, of course, it still has a nice flip screen on it, which I love, comes out, flips towards you. So if you're doing uh, um, vlogs or something, you can record yourself. Excellent. And the newer screen is OLED instead of LCD. So it's gonna be even better image quality than what's on here. And this is actually pretty good image quality already. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's using the same battery. So the battery life on this I find is really good. I get about two hours on the G85. I'm pretty sure the G95 is gonna be very similar. So the G95 still comes with the excellent image stabilization that the G85 comes with. And that image stabilization works really well. Matter of fact, I did some testing on this channel comparing this to the uh, Canon M50, the G85 to the Canon M50. And you can see the difference. I mean, it's crazy. And I've used this to shoot weddings and whatnot, and the image stabilization is just excellent. So I really, really like it. But just keep in mind that if you're not using native like Panasonic lenses, and you're using like, I was using a Sigma lens. It was a 17 to 50 F2.8 with a Kippen adapter. And it did some really wonky things when I was shooting a wedding once. I, and I could have sworn I had the image stabilization off and it was still really, really shaky. It was adding shake to my shot. I was on a monopod and it was making it shaky. You would think I didn't have it on a monopod. It was just, it looked like, I don't know, like I was having a seizure. It was, it was really bad. And I was just like, whoa. So you gotta be careful. It doesn't work for all lenses. I find that if you have lenses on there that have no image stabilization, it adds stabilization to those lenses and it works fine. If you have a lens that has image stabilization on it and it's not Panasonic, sometimes it works really well and sometimes it doesn't. So you gotta, you gotta be really careful. Just keep that in mind. Another thing worth mentioning is that you can actually charge the G95 via the USB port now, which you cannot do with the G85, so that's kind of cool. So. Obviously, you could, maybe you could charge your camera up as you, for me, when I'm shooting weddings, sometimes I'll shoot the ceremony one place and then the reception is somewhere else. So I could bring like a little charging bank and charge the thing up in my car as I'm driving to the next location for 30 minutes. So that's pretty cool. So it does have that feature. It does shoot 120 frames per second now, which the G85 does not do. You can do that in 1080p, but there's no sound from what I understand. So 
that's something to be mindful of. Um, not a big deal. You do when you're shooting super slow motion like that, you're not really looking for sound anyway. So it's not, it really doesn't matter. I originally bought the G85. I bought it because it has unlimited record times. So you could just keep recording until your card runs out and the G95 still has that same feature. So now, would I upgrade from my G85 to a G95? Personally, I would not. Um, even though it does have some newer features that are pretty cool, they're not enough to compel me to upgrade. Now, if I was a person who maybe has an older Micro Four Thirds camera and I'm looking to get something newer that has all the cool 4K features and all this other stuff, would I get a G85 or would I get a G95? Um, and personally, I think I would still go with the G85 because right now you could get them for about $700 new with the 12 to 60 kit lens and a bunch of extras. And I'll put links down below, it's really insane. So I probably would get the G85. I don't know that I would get a G95. I mean, if you feel like the additional features that I mentioned are things that you would use and you know you absolutely need, then obviously you get the G95. But I think most people don't. So I think the G85 currently is a better value in my opinion. Oh, and one other thing that it comes with that I forgot to mention because it might be important to some people is it does come with V-Log natively now in the camera. The G85 doesn't have an option to have V-Log at all. So now it actually comes with V-Log in the G95. I know that might be a big deal to some people. Some people like to do a lot of color grading and stuff to their images. But keep in, keep in mind that's with an 8-bit picture. And in my experience, when you use V-Log with 8-bit, it doesn't really grade very well. So you gotta be really careful. You gotta nail your exposure precisely because if you don't, you're not gonna have a lot of latitude to change colors. That's just my personal experience. I'm not the best color colorist in the world, but that's what I've seen. So keep that in mind, take that for what it is. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Panasonic G95. Yes, it is a cool camera. Um, but don't always change your cameras like you change your clothes. If you already have a G85, I probably would just stick with it. I don't think you should change it. Um, alrighty. And I don't know if you can hear it, but my son is crying now. He just woke up. We made it through this without him waking up. This is insane. Uh, also, before I leave, um, I'm setting up a new page on my website, www.mediahammock.com slash used, where I'm gonna start putting some of this gear that I've bought for this channel on that page for you guys to purchase. So you know it's coming from me. You know, you've seen it on my channel. It's been taken care of. Uh, it's in good condition. You know who you're getting it from, so you're gonna get a good deal on some used equipment that you know works. You save some money off of buying it, you know, brand new. So go check that out. I'm gonna put that page up and there'll be a few items on there. And more and more as time progresses, I'm just gonna keep throwing stuff out there, so keep checking it out. Um, I thank you for watching as usual. Um, if you know anybody else that might find this to be useful, go ahead and share it with them um, and all that good stuff. And I really hate that I say um so much, man. It's really not cool. But anyway, I'm Mike Turner. Thanks for watching. I guess I'll see you soon.